Hello girlfriends and welcome to another episode of Tried and Tested. So a while ago we did an episode with Love, Beauty and Planet where I tried to go green for a week. Now the great news is that I have actually managed to stick to some of the habits that I picked up during that week and today I'm going to be showing you some of the eco-friendly products I've been using as well as trying out some new ones. And today we have a special guest. We actually met her during the episode. So Florence is the owner of Unpacked, the store that we visited. So she has a lot more information when it comes to living green and I'm still a green baby so we thought it'd be fun to have her on to just, you know, ask her a lot of questions. And this is not a sponsored episode. We got some of the stuff from Unpacked, but we also got some of the stuff from other places. But she's here anyway! Yay! Thank you! You're welcome! <laughs> so these are silicone lid food covers and they're supposed to be a replacement for cling wrap and they help to create an airtight seal. I've actually never used these before, but as you can see, we have a variety of different size items here. So let's wrap them up! Oh, that's like so easy. The seal feels very tight. If you yeah. choose the appropriate seal, it's actually airtight. So it's leak-proof as well. Also? Wow, this looks like a slightly tight fit. Will that spoil it? It's still okay. Uh, silicone is actually quite durable. Mm. But most important, just keep it out of sharp objects. Is it microwavable? Yeah, it's microwavable. This is so good! If you go through a lot of cling wraps in your kitchen, it's actually a practical switch because you actually save the money from buying all the cling wraps. Yes, you would save so much money. I would give this like a 10 out of 10. I just find it so much more convenient than cling wrap and so much easier to use. The fact that you can reuse them is like a wonderful bonus because yeah, like running out of stuff at home sometimes is a bit... <laughs> so these are reusable cotton pads. So I got them right and I'll be honest, they were like sitting there for a long time. Because for a lot of eco-friendly stuff, it requires washing and sanitizing. Like cotton pads, you're so used to seeing like the gunk on it and just chucking it. So seeing so much gunk on this and then having to wash it, to me I, I wasn't confident that it would actually be clean. But I realised that it's actually quite easy to wash. So after I finished using, I will just wash with soap and water. Sometimes if like there's still stain, I will put makeup remover. But usually soap and water is enough. They're very gentle on the skin and also they're quite hardy. Like they're very durable. Like you know how some cotton pads like when you use a few times, it will start to disintegrate, disintegrate, fray or whatever. These don't. Even the number of pads that I use also reduces. So for a phase of makeup, right? There are some days when I can do with just one. Sometimes I will need a second one like for the eyeliner or like the mascara or my glue, eyelash glue or whatever if it's taking longer to come out. You can also use this for uh, nail polish removing. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it might stain, so normally I will recommend to keep like a few pieces for just nail polish remover. I will give this like a 10 because I don't know what I don't like about it. I guess the washing thing and all that, but if I just switch my brain to think of it as like a towel, because you have to wash your towels as well, it's just that this happens to be smaller. So lately I've been trying out bar shampoo. So I also got the pouch there. So it's all stuck together now so you can't see it. But basically it's like a bar of soap and then you lather it and use the lather to wash your hair. I've kind of been sort of experimenting with it. Okay, I need some help because it takes so long to lather. Is this normal? Yes, this is normal because it doesn't have a surfactant inside. This is actually a pure soap shampoo bar. So the great thing about bar shampoos and bar soaps is that they have no packaging at all. I mean, like there's some in the supermarkets that it will be in cardboard boxes and stuff but like this was in a glass jar you just take it right out and this was like on a wooden tray so you just take it and go so this is a new bar of bar shampoo so i guess we'll show you like lathering it without a bag and with a bag normally we'll recommend first is you wet your hands first let's say this is your hair you can just directly rub it on your hair it will give you the right amount of the foam you can just rub it into your scalp as you rub it will foam after that you can just rinse it off that's a very small amount of soap Okay, so I think that maybe I'm getting it wrong because that's about the amount of soap that I get when I rub it but I'm just like, where is the, where is the lather? <laughs> so actually just a little bit of soap enough already. Okay, so this one, you wet the whole thing, right? Ah, this one you have yeah. to wet the whole thing. Then when you see a thin layer on your hand, you can set it aside and then after that, then you rub it into your... Scalp. This is enough? Yes. Really? And then you just rub it through with your fingers. It will form up more and more. And that's when you actually clean your scalp. Do you know what I've been doing? I've been doing this. And then after I take this, then I try to like squeeze out the foam from there. Because I was like, where's the foam? Where's the foam? Okay, okay. That makes sense. I have been using this for a while. And in terms of convenience, it's not lah. 
I mean, <laughs> this is definitely not as convenient as kind of like taking a bottle and like tipping it out and squeezing. Do you know what I mean? It's definitely not as convenient. So in terms of like the efficacy of the product compared to like regular commercial shampoos, I do find that this is slightly lacking because it doesn't maybe have like say anti-frizz properties. I don't know whether the different types of bar shampoos kind of cater for that, do they? Uh, yes, we actually have a few kind of shampoo bars depending on your hair types. So for this one, I don't know if I just didn't pick the right one for my hair type, but in terms of like cleaning, I mean, my hair did feel clean lah. Even though because I didn't see all the suds and all that, I was like, I don't know if I washed my hair at all. But it didn't feel gross. I think that in terms of usage, there is a bit of a learning curve and a lot of getting used to it. Um, but I feel like it's actually not too bad. Now I know you don't need to lather so much before you start like shampooing. I think it's not too bad. Maybe I'll give it like a, an eight. On a rush day, I would give that a 4. But on a day where I have like time to, you know, do all that, actually it doesn't take that much time also. Like, I think the more you do, the faster it will be. So another thing I've started using recently, uh, things underwear. So they're actually period underwear. I'm so sorry, I actually packed it and then I forgot to bring it. But that's why I'm talking about it without it like being here. It's actually like this. We tried them out a while ago and at that time, I think I couldn't see myself kind of committing to it for an entire period cycle but recently a friend of mine started talking about them and she made it sound so easy and then I was on the website going like you know what I think I'll give this a shot so I did so I got a whole batch for like heavy flow regular flow wow this is a lot of information <laughs> Like a whole bunch for like regular flow, heavy flow, and then like when it's very light, and also like they have thong options as well. So I was like, wow, and it's actually not so bad. Like after you finish using it, you just rinse it out first with soap and water. And then you just let it air dry and then when you're ready to wash everything, you throw it into the washing machine. There's no smell and it's just they're pretty as well. Like I can totally see myself wearing them on a regular day. So when I started to commit to wearing them, I think I got a set of about seven or eight. So for me, normally I use like maybe three pairs a day on like heavy flow days. It's quite good because I feel like I didn't realize how many pads I was throwing away. Like a lot, a lot of pads. But I think with things also, there is still also the option of kind of using a pad for half the day and then just using the things for the other half of the day because like legit, I don't, <laughs> don't want to be carrying around like a bloody underwear in my bag. I haven't gotten that far yet. Maybe one day I will, but at this point in time, I'll be realistic with myself. No, not yet. <laughs> but what I really love is that at night, with pads, you can you have to worry about leaking sometimes, so you get the massive ones. But with things, it's like it's all round protection and it's comfortable. <laughs> okay, so Lawrence, the last time we were at Unpacked, we saw these reusable menstrual pads. Yeah, so those are direct replacement for the disposable menstrual pads. Usually with disposable pads, we will find that, you know, at the end of the period cycle, we will feel that there's some skin irritation. Right. But with reusable menstrual pad, because um, there's more breathability in the cloth material, mm. so you don't feel that you develop any rashes. So there are a lot of customers that come back and buy. I must tell you guys about this girl. She's amazing. Uh, her channel is Precious Star Pads and she talks about all sorts of menstrual products in a way that is super educational and she's very young. I actually saw a video of her taking a used pad and washing it on screen and I was like, whoa. So if you guys want to find out more about like reusable menstrual products, I think she's a great source of information. So for things, I've been using it for like a couple of cycles now and I would give it like a 9 because it's so comfortable. I can't get over how great they look. It just feels clean. The only reason why I would give it a 9 is because actually, I wish that there was a way for them to kind of have options also where they can just change the inside. So I don't have to take out the entire underwear. Um, I can have the option of just changing the lining as you would like say a pad. So now we're going to be looking at some stuff for teeth. 
So I have switched to using a bamboo toothbrush. They just look like a regular toothbrush, just all made of bamboo. I said for the bristles is nylon. Ah, oh, okay. This is the 100% natural organic mint and neem tooth powder. They say that this is supposed to be better because it's natural and then also it reduces packaging. I mean it's a glass bottle, I get it, but how is it so much different from like toothpaste? In a way, it actually lasts longer compared to a tube of toothpaste. A jar like this, about 50 grams, should last about 5 months. But a tube of toothpaste will last about 3-4 three, three. weeks. Oh, that's quite a big difference then. Yeah, and also glass jars are recyclable. Okay, let me try this. So you're supposed to wet the toothbrush and they say to dip the brush into the powder and then brush your teeth. So like you see, um, there's actually very little on the toothbrush mm. and that's why one jar of 50 grams can last very long. Can I just say that I have <laughs> feelings? <laughs> All these like organic teeth products. <laughs> <laughs> because they taste so different from what we're used oh, to, yeah. you know what I mean? Okay, that actually does feel nice. It's a mint aftertaste. Yeah, that actually feels like nice and fresh and clean. Mmm, interesting. Okay, I need to explain my face as I started brushing my teeth. It was so uncomfortable. It was like, because it's all powder, right? So it just felt like my whole mouth was being filled with chalk. And the first part, as you're brushing the outside area, the powder is kind of like stuck between your teeth and then your lips. So it just feels really like you're eating all this powder, which is really weird. But after it mixes with the saliva and the water after a while, it starts to feel a bit like less dry in the mouth. But after you finish, it really does feel nice and cooling and it feels like, like how a regular toothpaste would have behaved, I guess, after you rinse it out. It's not a bad taste, it wasn't like the this one. <laughs> but it was like a bit salty, a little bit herbly. I think a taste that you could actually get used to. I would give this a 7. It's easy to use, economical, it's great for the environment. As for the bamboo toothbrush, okay, I feel like they don't have as many options as a lot of like toothbrush brands out there in terms of like the types of bristles or like the hardness, softness and all that. I do wish if they're going to be using nylon anyway, if they could just kind of put that technology into a bamboo toothbrush. But it's still okay and I feel good about not throwing away so much plastic. Seven, because I think it's functional, just wish they had more options. So these things are actually mine. I've been trying to bring them around on a regular basis and I must say I've been quite good at it. So this is so cute. This actually looks like a tissue packet. It opens up into this bag. So this is actually like a lunchbox or a takeaway bag. So you can put all kinds of food inside. You can put soup, bubble tea, food to like pack and go. And the great thing about it is that it is like, what's this material? Uh, TPU. So it's actually a kind of a very soft silicone. So it has the waterproof quality which you can put in your noodle soup, strings, etc. and not stain the fabric outside. And also it's so easy to wash. You just use soap and water on both sides and you because this is like umbrella material. Umbrella right? fabric. So very convenient, very easy to use and it falls out into such a tiny little package. Which is so cute and they have a whole ton of designs. So as a takeaway bag, you just fold it down. And it's a completely sealed up package. And show us how your daughter drinks bubble tea. <laughs> we will usually pull a hole here, open it, pop in a reusable straw in and it's good to go. That's so cool. I got a question though, like when you ask them to put the bubble tea in here, what do they, how do they react? They will usually ask us, are you sure you can place bubble tea inside? We do have some no's. Sometimes we have our bottles or either that or we'll just skip the bubble tea drink and we'll get something else. You would skip the bubble tea drink if they don't want to put it in this bag? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yes, because uh, sometimes it's all in the mind. It's a conscious consumption. Okay, explain more about conscious consumption. It's just that before you purchase anything, uh, you think through whether you really need it and whether you can skip it first before you purchase it. At the other hand, you can think that you are actually living healthier also because you are taking less sugar. <laughs> very good point. Here I have a spork. It's very cute because it's so um, handy and it's very portable. Personally, for this spork, right, I found that the spines were a bit short. But I think that it's kind of a trade-off because it folds. Because I was actually looking for a spork to kind of complete my set. And 
when I saw the foldable one, I was like, yes, this is it. So I also use my chopsticks. And also, I've got my straws. Okay, I must say, I'm not very good with the straw thing. Because you're like drinking through it, right? And then you have to put it back into your pouch and carry it around for the rest of the day. So then the next time you use it, I know you should rinse it out first, but it's not a proper wash, you know what I mean? And then, do I bring the brush everywhere? This is, I don't usually yes. bring the brush. We normally recommend to bring the brush along. After drinking, try to shake off the residue first. Mm. Go to a sink and then you can rinse it with your straw cleaner. Okay, that does require a bit of commitment. Okay, I'll try that next time. I haven't actually brought this out for bubble tea. It's so bad! It's very bad because I realise that you buy things that you don't use, then it ends up being a waste. A waste. So I really need to commit to that. I haven't done that yet. But I actually figured out another use for this at home. Like when I make my healthy shakes, Sometimes they're really thick and they don't always taste the best. Um, I find when I drink it with a bubble tea straw, it feels like a treat. Okay, so for myself, I'm usually like on set or like running around, so most of my meals are on the go. So instead of using disposable cutlery, I try to use these instead. I think that my rating for these products would be like a uh, 10. Yeah, I'm very happy with them. And it's something that I have found quite okay to incorporate into my everyday life. I will say it took me a while to kind of start using this. But once I started using it, it was actually very easy. Thank you so much for coming here today. It was so much Welcome. fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you guys had fun. If you want to find out more about the products, how much they cost and where they're from, they're in the links in the description box down below. Or you can go to our Tried and Tested Facebook page. And if you've already subscribed to the YouTube channel, that's great. Now you just need to hit that bell and you'll be notified every time a new video comes out onto YouTube or just download the Click Network app and you can watch the videos before they come out onto YouTube. Anything you want to say to them? Be a conscious consumer. Yes. Till next time, go, go be, be beautiful! beautiful.